I cannot find another moment in modern history where David versus Goliath courage had more consequence on freedom and democracy than what happened in Greece in World War II. It's a gift. Here the country that created freedom and democracy in the end, in the modern world, saved it for us all. This story has been forgotten in the American consciousness and I think probably the world. What the Ojide Foundation is hoping to do is to help give this memory rebirth. Now we live now in times when again the prospects for democracy seem tenuous. I don't think there's any debate about this. In Greece, as well as in America, and perhaps throughout the world, in spite of hopeful signs, the world's older democracies are under a great deal of pressure and duress. We seem to be seeing before our eyes the basic fabric of long, long-standing arrangements unraveling, and the prospects for such broader forms of self-sacrifice and self-government becoming or seeming to become more distant. And so I think it's nothing can be more important at, at a time like this than to remember that day and then that period when the Greeks said no to tyranny. A tyranny that was, in fact, the same kind of tyranny that was feared by those ancients, the tyranny of the stronger over the weaker, an offer to simply join a system of government that offered this vision as alive and indeed a widely embraced prospect. And so we need to recall the courage and the sacrifice of the Greeks throughout their history, and of course on that day and in that period of time, as a no to empires, as a no to tyranny, but not only the political tyranny of the Persians or the Nazis, but that tyranny that lies always sown within the human heart as a possibility. The view that history is written by the winners is a commonplace one. Uh, Many people have echoed that statement, including Winston Churchill. And it is also true that history is written by the big and powerful sometimes, and the smaller winners can be overlooked. And this is our subject today. It is certainly the case with Greece's role in World War II, and especially its engagement with the Axis powers from October 28, 1940, when it rejected the Italian ultimatum through June 1, 1941, when the Axis powers finally took control of the island of Crete, the last part of Greece that had remained free. The news that Greece rejected Italy's ultimatum on October uh, 28th by responding Ohi, and that the Greek people were preparing to fight was greeted with approval uh, in the democratic world, including the United States. This is what the New York Times reported from Athens on October 29th, quote, with shops closed for the day owing to air raid warnings, merrymaking was in full swing here. Flags were out and bands of enthusiasts marched around. They greeted each other with handshakes and thumbs up. Everywhere, officers, soldiers, and civilians scurried helter-skelter through the streets to join the colors, clambering into taxis and buses. Students demonstrated outside the university and scattered patriotic pamphlets in the streets. Close quotation marks. The same day, the New York Times declared in an editorial entitled The Hour of Greece, quote, the Greeks in this hour, outnumbered as they are, poor in the instruments of modern war, remember and defend the glory that was Greece. They recognize at once that this is a fight for independence of all small nations, and I would add all big nations as well, Whatever happens, their instant determination to prove worthy of their ancestors of their freedom vindicates the heroic tradition of Marathon, Thermopylae, and Salamis, and establishes once more the title to nationhood of a brave and ancient people. Whatever happens, Greece's stand is a bright sign in the darkness. 
It is, in its long history, Hellas has never been a great power. It has survived many invasions and defeats because it is a great nation. Close quotation marks. This morale booster, this inspiration that comes through these lines, I believe, is, is one of Greece's major contribution, aside from those crucial, important, strategic contributions. As I hope you have seen from the coverage of the New York Times that I've shared with you today, and there are very many more articles and many more other news outlets which evoke the same spirit. It is undeniable that beyond a conventional strategic contribution, Greece's war effort from October 28 through the fall of Crete played a crucial part in bolstering the will of all freedom-loving peoples to fight against Nazism and fascism. Thank you very much.